We're starting our material on logic and conditionals by looking at Boolean expressions. So um, up till this point in the course, we've learned how to write assignment statements. Um, and those we can use to change the values of variables or the properties of various objects. Uh, so the conditional statement is our next kind of statement. And this will allow us to actually change what the program does based on the results of a test. So it'll let us write programs that are much more flexible and powerful. Now, to allow a program to make choices based on conditions, well, we need to introduce a new programming construct, the conditional statement. And part of a conditional statement is a test that lets us determine what's going to happen. So first of all, we're going to look at the tests. Now, let's step back a minute and get some vocabulary here. Um, an expression in Visual Basic is a chunk of code that evaluates to a value. We've already seen a couple of kinds of expressions. So like an arithmetic expression um, can include numbers and it can include variables whose values are numbers and arithmetic operators or functions, you know, like um, square root or something like that. And it, the result of such an expression uh, gives us a value that's a number. Same thing with strings. We can have a string constant, which is just a string in quotes, or we can have a um, string operator, like the ampersand, that connects two strings together, or we can have uh, additional functions and so on that operate on strings. But the final result of a string expression is going to be a string. All right, now we want to look at the same kind of thing, expressions, but based on the Boolean data type. And this is named for logician George Boole, very interesting person that you can read about on the web. A Boolean variable only has two possible values, true and false. And a Boolean expression is one that evaluates to one of these values, true or false. So the fa in fact, the constants true and false are the simplest Boolean expressions and they're similar to uh, a string as a string expression or an actual number as an arithmetic expression. But we want to see how to create more interesting examples. And one of the best ways to do that is to use a Boolean operator. So here's a listing of the different Boolean operators that are available. Uh, they're relational operators, I should say. They, they let us compare two quantities. And these quantities can be strings or numbers. So we can test if two things are equal. We can test if they're not equal. And this not equal is made up of two characters that you can find on your keyboard put together. There's less than, less than or equal, again made up of two characters, greater than and greater than or equal. So here are some examples using numbers. I have three variables, which are doubles. And um, I've assigned them values 1, 2, and 2, respectively. And here um, are some little expressions. So for example, if I write var a less than var b, well, var a equals 1 and var b equals 2. It is less. So the value of this expression is true. Uh, less than or equal, also true. Var c less than var b, well, var c is 2 and var b is also 2. It's not actually less. So that's false. But less than or equal, that one's true. And what about equal? That's also true. Now there's something to notice here. The equal sign is used as a relational operator. It's also used, as we know, as an assignment operator where it has a completely different meaning. So uh, which, one we're, which way we're using it, which one we actually mean, is determined by the context. And um, it will be clear from the way we're using it what's going on. But you should still know that we're using the same symbol for two very different purposes here. All right, so those are simple expressions that give us a Boolean result. Uh, if we want to build up a more complex expression, then we're going to use Boolean operators. And the most common ones are AND, OR, and NOT. And we're going to go into a little detail about what these are and how to use them. There are other Boolean operators, uh, which we're not going to get into in any detail. So um, not is the simplest one. It takes one argument, and it reverses its truth value. 
So if I apply not to the constant true or to any Boolean expression whose value is true, it will give me the result false, and vice versa, not of anything that's false gives me a true. When we get into and and or, it's a little more complicated, so now I'm going to use a thing called a truth table, which lets me lay out in tabular form all the possibilities and what the values are. So here I'm saying x and y are two Boolean values. They could be expressions, constants, whatever. Just two things that evaluate to true or false. And now I'm saying, well, let's look at the possibilities. If x is true and y is true, if x is true and y is false, if x is false and y is true, and if x is false and y is false. We're always going to do our truth tables in this order. And here I'm showing what the result would be for the expression x and y. Now for x and y to be true as an expression, both x and y individually have to be true. And that's reflected here. So on the first line, x and y are individually both true. So the result of x and y is true. And otherwise, it's false. And you can see that the English word and and this logical operator and have a very similar meaning. With or, things are a little different. So here's, again, our x and y and all their possible values laid out in the truth table. And now the expression x or y is true if at least one of x or y is true. So if they're both true, it's true. If, one is, if x is true and y is false, it's true. If x is false and y is true, it's true. If they're both false, then it's false. Now in English, when we say x or y, like if I tell my grandchild, uh, you can have a cookie or a donut, I don't mean you can have both. But in logic, you do mean that. That's okay. It can be both or one or the other. They just can't both be false. Now, if I have a more complex expression that I've built up using these Boolean operators, I can figure out its value by using a truth table. So let's consider this expression. <clears throat> it's not x or x and y. Okay, so here I have the truth table with all the possible values. And then what I do is I break this up into its constituents, evaluate those, and then put it together. So I look at not x. What happens here is I reverse the values of x. So true to false and false to true. So you can see if I compare the x column with the not x column, they're the reverse. Okay, here I'm doing x and y. So I'm going from both true gives me true. And in the other cases, I get a false. That's exactly like the truth table for and that we saw before. And now I'm going to take these two columns, the not x and the x or y, x and y, and perform the or operation on them. And to do that, I use the rule for or, which is the or of two expressions is true, except when they're both false, and then it's false. So if we look here in this first line, th this guy is true, so it's true. Second line, they're both false, so it's false. Third line, this one's true, so it's true. Fourth line, this one's true, so it's true. So this is the final truth table, which gives me the analysis of this expression. All right, let's do another. Now here I change from x and y to a and b, but the principle is the same. So here I want to look at the expression not a and b. So first I do a and b using my rule for and. It's true when they're both true, otherwise it's false. Then I apply not, and I reverse it. So this is my final answer for that expression. Now going to the other one, I want to do not A or not B. So first I'll make not A here by reversing A. So you can see false whenever A is true, and vice versa. And now I'll do not B by reversing B. And now in this column, I'm going to apply the rule for or, which remember gives me True, when either one or both is true, it's false only when both are false. So, okay. Looking at here, in the first row, they're both false, so I get a false. All the other rows, at least one of them is true, so I get a true. Now, if I compare this expression with this expression, the truth tables are identical. And that means, logically, 
these two expressions are equivalent. Now that's important because I might find one form more uh, convenient than the other depending on an application I'm doing. If you ever study circuits in electrical engineering, you do a ton of these transformations. You learn all about it um, in order to know how to make a circuit in the best possible way for its layout, whether you're doing it in silicon or whatever. If you're doing database queries, optimizing a query can mean finding a logically equivalent version, version that um, is more efficient to run through the database. So there are a lot of applications for this. Now, okay, you had a couple things to watch out for. Um, informally, when we write math, we sometimes write something like A less than B less than or equal to C. You cannot do that in programming. Okay, you have to break it up. We know what this means. It means A is less than B and B is less than or equal to C. When we're doing programming, we have to put the and in there explicitly, write A less than B and B is less than or equal to C. The other thing is if you happen to be writing an expression that combines two quantities using an or, let's say, x equals 0 or y divided by x is less than 5. Well, here we're, we're doing the or because we don't want to divide by 0. You have to be careful because in some implementations of programming languages, um, both of these operands are evaluated even though as soon as you know the first one is true, there's no reason to do the second one, right? Because you already know the or is true. But um, this could cause a runtime error if you write it in a program. So you have to write it something like this a little different way, or at least it's safer to do so. Now, there's other uses for logic. As I mentioned, um, logical expressions are part of database queries often. And if you're going to be using databases and writing queries, understanding these logical operators can be extremely useful. You can also use logic to form advanced queries in search engines like Google, for example. Also, we're going to limit ourselves to the three operators and or and not. They are actually sufficient to write any logical expression we might want to. Uh, though not always in the simplest way. There are plenty of other logical operators out there, and some of them are even available in Excel and BASIC. And if you want to use those, it's fine. Just make sure you really understand the truth table before you do so.